In this lecture, we're going to talk about solving general triangles using the law of sines. So the law of sines states, for any triangle with sides A, B, and C, and opposite angles, capital A, capital B, and capital C respectively, then the ratio of the sine of the angle divided by the corresponding side will be equal. So sine of A divided by A equals the sine of B divided by B equals the sine of C divided by C. So let's talk about solving triangles using the law of sines. The first type of triangle we can solve using the law of sines is an angle-angle side triangle. This is a triangle where we know two angles and the side that is opposite of one of the angles. The second type of triangle is an angle side angle triangle where we know two angles and the side that is in between them. And the third type of triangle that we can solve with the law of sines is a side side angle triangle where we know two sides and the angle opposite of one of the sides are known. Note that with a side-side angle triangle, if the angle is acute, then there's a possibility of having zero, one, or two triangles that would satisfy any conditions given. And if the angle is obtuse, then you can have one or two solutions. All right, so basically to use the law of signs, you need to make sure that you have a triangle where you know three pieces of information, and two of the things that you know have to be an angle and the side that's across from it. So let's do an example where we solve an angle side angle triangle. So solve the given triangle. If side B is equal to 10, angle C has a measure of 23 degrees, and angle A has a measure of 131 degrees. So since we already know angles A and C, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and find angle B. Remember that the three angles in a triangle have to add up to be 180 degrees, so to find the measure of angle B, we can take the 180 degrees for the entire triangle and subtract the two, si two angles that we know. So 180 minus 131 minus 23. If we simplify that, that's going to give us a 26 degree angle. So the angle B measures 26 degrees. Now that we know all of our angles, we can move on and try to find the sides that we are, are missing. So we're going to start by finding side A. And again, as we've said previously, when you're trying to find missing information, try to use as much of the information that was actually given to you as you can. So we're going to use the law of sines, and since the only side that was given to us was side B that has a length of 10, we're going to need to use side B and angle B in our formula. So to find side A, we can set up the equation A divided by sine of 131 degrees equals 10 divided by the sine of 26 degrees. We can solve for A by multiplying both sides of the equation by the sine of 131. So A will equal 10 divided by the sine of 26 degrees times the sine of 131 degrees. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, we're going to get approximately 17.2. So the length of side A is approximately 17.2 units. And finally, we want to find the length of side C, so we're going to use the same approach that we did for side A. So using the law of sines, C divided by the sine of 23 should equal 10 divided by the sine of 26. We can solve for C by multiplying both sides by the sine of 23 degrees, so C will equal 10 over the sine of 26 times the sine of 23. And if we evaluate that in our calculator, we'll get that the length of side C was approximately 8.9. And so we finish solving this triangle. Next we want to do an example where we solve a side angle angle triangle. So let's solve the given triangle. This time we have triangle ABC where angle A is 100 degrees and angle B is 30 degrees and side B is equal to 6. So again, since we already know two of the angles, the easiest first step is to find the third angle. Since all of the angles in a triangle have to add to be 180 degrees, that means that C will be 180 minus 100 minus 30, which gives us 50 degrees. Next, we'll find the length of side A. Using the law of sines, we can have A divided by the sine of 100 equals 6 divided by the sine of 30. If we multiply both sides of this equation by the sine of 100, we'll get A equals 6 divided by the sine of 30 times the sine of 100. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, we'll get approximately 
approximately 11.81. So A is approximately 11.81 units. And finally, we want to find the length of side C. So using the law of sines, C divided by sine of 50 degrees will equal 6 divided by the sine of 30 degrees. We can solve for C by multiplying both sides by the sine of 50. So 6 over sine 30 times the sine of 50 is going to be C. And if we plug that into our calculator, we're going to get that C is approximately 9.19 units. And so that solves the triangle. Next, we want to do a couple of examples where we look at side-side angle triangles. First, we want to try to solve the triangle with angle A equal to 89 degrees, side A equal to 15.6 inches, and side B equal to 18.4 inches. So if we sketch the triangle out, it'll look something like the picture shown here. Now remember when we only have one angle and the two sides, if we have a side-side angle triangle, then it's possible to have zero, one, or two solutions. So since we know the measure of angle A and the side across from it, and we know side B, the only thing we can do right now, the first thing that we need to do is try to find angle B using the law of sines. So using the law of sines, we would get 15.6 divided by the sine of 89 degrees equals 18.4 divided by the sine of B. If we evaluate 15.6 divided by the sine of 89, we get 15.602. So 15.602 equals 18.4 divided by the sine of B. We want to get B by itself, so we'll multiply both sides of the equation by sine of B and divide both sides by 15.602, giving us the sine of B equals 18.4 divided by 15.602. And then to find B, we take the inverse sine of both sides. So B would equal the inverse sine of 1.179. We'll put that in our calculator to evaluate it. But when you put it in your calculator, you should get something that says invalid input or error. And this is because the sine function only goes from, zero, from negative 1 to 1. So if we're trying to take the inverse sine of something bigger than 1, or something less than negative 1, it won't work because it doesn't exist. So since we get an invalid input or error message here, that means there's no solution. So there are no triangles that satisfy these conditions. Now let's look at an example of a side-side angle triangle that has two solutions. So we want to solve the given triangle. Angle C has a measure of 45.6 degrees. Side B is 42.1, and side C is 34.2. So we're going to start by finding the measure of angle B. Using the law of sines, 34.2 divided by the sine of 45.6 should equal 42.1 divided by the sine of B. If we evaluate 34.2 divided by sine of 45.6, we get 47.87 equals 42.1 divided by the sine of B. To get B by itself, we're going to multiply both sides by the sine of B and divide both sides by 47.87. So sine of B equals 42.1 divided by 47.87. And then to find B, you take the inverse sine of both sides. So B would equal the inverse sine of 0.8795. And if we put that in our calculator, we get that B is going to equal 61.6 degrees. All right, so since this angle is an acute angle, and C is also an acute angle, we have to consider another angle that might have that sine value. So remember, sine is positive in both the first and second quadrants. So 61.6 is in the first quadrant. We need to find the corresponding angle in the second quadrant. And we can do that by finding the supplement. To find the corresponding angle in the second quadrant, we'll take B2, we'll call it B2, and it'll be 180 degrees minus 61.6 degrees. And so the other possibility for angle B would be 118.4 degrees. So now we have two possibilities for angle B. We need to finish solving the triangle using both possibilities. So we'll start by finding the measure of angle A. 
Since we know the angle measures for B and C, we can use the trick that everything sums up to be 180 degrees. So in our first scenario, A would equal 180 degrees minus 45.6 degrees minus 61.6 degrees. And if we simplify that, that'll give us 72.8 degrees. So A1 would be 72.8. In the second scenario, or using the second value for B, we would have 180 minus 45.6 minus 118.4, which would give us an A value of 16 degrees. All right, now the only thing that we don't know is the length of side A, so we're going to do that with both scenarios. Using the law of sines in our first scenario, A divided by sine of 72.8 should equal 34.2 divided by the sine of 45.6. We can solve for A1 by multiplying both sides by the sine of 72.8. And if we put that in our calculator, we get side A1 is approximately 45.7 units. And we can do the same thing for the second scenario. A2 over the sine of 16 will equal 34.2 divided by the sine of 45.6. To find A2, we'll multiply both sides by the sine of 16. So 34.2 divided by sine of 45.6 times the sine of 16. If we evaluate that with our calculator, we'll get that A2 is approximately 13.2 units. And so we found values for two different triangles that satisfy our given con conditions. All right, so now let's do an example where we use the law of sines to solve an application. On a certain automobile, the crankshaft is 3 inches long and the connecting rod is 9 inches long. And we're going to show this in the triangle below. At the time when angle OPQ is 15 degrees, how far is the piston P from the center O of the crankshaft? So what we have is this triangle down here with angle P equal to 15 degrees, side O is equal to 9, and side little p is equal to 3. So given this information, we should be able to solve the triangle. So we're going to start by finding the measure of angle O. Using the law of sines, 3 divided by the sine of 15 should equal 9 divided by the sine of O. If we plug that in our calculator to simplify, we get 11.59 equals 9 divided by sine of O. To get O by itself, we'll multiply both sides by the sine of O and divide both sides by 11.59, giving us the sine of O equals 9 divided by 11.59. And then to find O, we take the inverse sine of both sides. So O will be the inverse sine of 0 0.7765. Now again, since this is an acute angle, and the angle we were given is an acute angle as well, there's a possibility of having two triangles. So with this inverse sine giving us an angle in the first quadrant, 50.9 degrees, we also have to consider the corresponding angle in the second quadrant that would have the same sine value. So to find that angle, we'll do 180 minus this given angle. So our second possibility, O2, would be 180 degrees minus 50.9, which gives us 129.1 degrees. And so now we can find the measure of angle Q. In our first scenario, using O1, Q1 would equal 180 degrees minus 50.9 degrees minus 15 degrees, which gives us 114.1 degrees. And in the second scenario, Q2 would equal 180 degrees minus 15 degrees minus 129.1 degrees, which gives us 35.9 degrees when we evaluate it. And so now the last step is to find the measure of, of side Q, which is what the problem is asking for. Using the law of sines with our first scenario, we'll get Q1 divided by the sine of 114.1 equals 3 divided by the sine of 15 degrees. If we multiply both sides of the equation by the sine of 114.1 degrees and put it in our calculator, we'll get that Q1 is approximately 10.58 inches. And if we use the law of sines with the second scenario, Q2 divided by the sine of 35.9 degrees We'll equal 3 divided by the sine of 15 degrees. To solve for Q2, we multiply both sides by the sine of 35.9 degrees. So Q2 equals 3 over the sine of 15 times the sine of 35.9 degrees. And if we evaluate that with our calculator, we'll get Q2 is approximately 6.8 inches.